Hey guys, I have got a client with an arthritic hip on my table and because of the nature of arthritis being in the joint itself and being a bone issue, this is not something I can directly manipulate. So what I'm going to do is affect the muscle tissue around the joint and talk to you guys a little bit about the kinetic chain. So walking through how a dysfunction like this can throw off the entire structure and how you can help as a massage therapist. Unless your client really likes knowing when it's going to rain without looking at the weather channel. I'm starting off with a little game of bones, which is my butter that is geared towards arthritis pain and promoting joint health. Because if you're going to play this game, you got to play it right. I'm also starting in the low back, which if you'll notice is not the hip. I'm doing this because my client was complaining about a little bit of low back pain as well as knee and foot issues that weren't huge but definitely affected by the arthritis and thrown into play because of the way that he moves in an effort to protect the arthritis and create a holding pattern around trying to find movement that is not painful. Enter the kinetic chain. The kinetic chain is really just the notion that if one segment or body part moves, it sets into motion a chain of events that's going to affect other segments or body parts. So let's just say that our friend here wants to go for a walk. He's going to pick up his right leg and in order for him to do that, his spine has to move to allow for room underneath the ground, his knee is going to bend, his ankle is going to bend, his left leg is going to stabilize, and he is going to create forward motion. Let's just say our little friend here also has arthritis in his right hip. As he picks up that right hip, it doesn't move as much as it should, therefore his whole body has to pick up a little bit more, his spine has to move farther, creating muscular tension on the right side opening up the left side more so than it usually would his left leg has to stabilize more and that right leg is going to struggle to move forward this walk is no fun for this frog so this is why I'm starting in with the low back first and I'm explaining to my client while I'm working the theory behind why I'm doing what I'm doing if you'll notice I'm pushing the tissues really down towards the hips and trying to soften up the tension that exists in his low back so that his hips can feel like they have a little more room to move and the tension in the low back softens up that muscle guarding starts to soften up it just relieves the general pain that can exist around arthritis not the arthritis itself but the pain that comes with muscle guarding around an area that is dysfunctional when I push tissue towards an area to help soften it, I like to think about it like a bungee cord. So if you've ever bungee corded something, I don't know, to the roof of your car or something along those lines, you know those hooks can hold pretty tight and you've got to push the cords together in order for those hooks to release. So in softening up the tissue towards the attachment sites, I am in my head envisioning that these little hooks or these attachment sites onto the bone, onto the hip in this example, are starting to let go a little bit loosen up and relieve a lot of that pull. So while these attachment sites along the posterior iliac crest are quote unquote unhooking themselves, the other big anatomical element at play here is the QL and the lower erectors and the attachments along the lumbar spine. So my focus as I'm softening these muscles down towards the hip is to also relieve any muscular tension that exists in this region, a little trigger point therapy, some compression, and just using the softness that I've just created to sink in a little bit deeper and allow those muscles to breathe and rest from this extra work that they've been doing. Now that those bungee cord hooks have been loosened up a little bit, I'm going to sink into this area with a little compression and just kind of emphasize the work that I'm doing and I want to do this through the sheet because in my experience direct pressure right on the posterior iliac crest at the attachment sites of the glute max and the glute medius tend to be really tender and sometimes harder for the client to receive that work. So I do these compressions with a little shaking, a little jostling through the sheets because it gives the client a little more comfort and a little more cushioning and the work isn't so direct and so severe. And the last thing I'm doing to bring it all together is to connect the hip up through the back and to connect the hip to the other side. And so reinforcing the functionality of the kinetic chain and trying to inhibit some of those holding patterns. After I've reminded my client that he might be related to Shakira, I'm going to work across the back and start sinking into the QL and the erectors on the other side for obvious reasons of balance, but also because the low back especially is one of those areas that if a client's complaining about pain on one side, there is most likely going to be tension on the opposite side as well. The low back in terms of the kinetic chain is really where everything crosses over. So coming from the right leg and going up through the hips to the left back and the left shoulder and vice versa, coming from the left leg going up through the hips across the low back and up to the right shoulder, this is where you'll see a lot of patterns of pain or dysfunction show up. 
in an effort to address this, I'm going to start asking my client to engage and remind this kinetic chain of how it should function and allow it to contract in its entirety and then sink in as he's releasing. So this first technique, I'm having him lift his right leg, knee straight up off the table and his left arm simultaneously towards the wall in front of him, engaging all the muscles through his lower back into his hips while I sink down into the QL. And then vice versa, I'm gonna do the same thing with the left leg and the right arm. So what this does is it pulls that kinetic chain into play and really connects one side of the body to the other and the lower half of the body to the upper half and allows everything to reset and recalibrate. This is the same technique here performed on the left side of the body and the only reason why I haven't chosen to walk around and stand on the right side is for filming purposes. But you can really stand on the same side that you're accessing or you can stand across the table and reach across the low back. Either one, it just depends on what you prefer mechanically. Staying on the same side allows you to lean in and sink in and use a little less force with your fingers and your arms. Standing on the opposite side allows you to pull instead of push and lean back and pretend like you're water skiing. I've moved down to the leg because like I mentioned earlier, I'm not focusing so much on the actual hip as much as I am on the muscles around the hip that are guarding and creating some firing patterns that are becoming dysfunctional for my client. So after I've warmed up the leg, I'm moving into the adductors and I'm really focusing on softening them with that same intention of the bungee cord hooks. For the most part, their origins are up in the pelvis at the most inferior aspect of the pubic bone, which we never access, but what I can do is grasp these muscles and knead them away from the femur and start influencing them up towards their attachment sites in the groin. I'm not working all the way up into the groin, but I'm softening those attachment sites and creating a relief in an area that often gets no relief, especially with somebody who's got arthritis. If you'll notice, my knee is up on the table and that's just there to create a soft blockade for my client's leg so that he doesn't feel like he has to use his own muscles to hold his leg on the table and he can relax a little easier. I've switched my focus over to the hamstrings and I've got an entire video on the hamstrings. So if you wanna check out that video, you can click that icon up in the corner of your screen. But for now, I'm gonna repeat the pattern that I was doing earlier with both the low back muscles and the adductors. I'm crowding the tissue towards the pelvis so the attachment sites all along the different aspects of the pelvic bone start to unhook and release. Here with the hamstrings, I can do this with a soft fist or with a forearm or an elbow. I've definitely found patterns in muscles that like to be worked certain ways. The adductors I feel like to be grasped and pulled away from the femur, whereas the hamstrings I feel react a little bit better to compression and deeper, broader work. So I'm sinking in and I'm pushing the muscles up towards the origin at the ischial tuberosity. And to add a little twist into it, I'm going to start sinking in with my left hand while I use my right hand to internally and externally rotate the leg at the ankle. So I'm just grabbing his ankle and pulling it in and out a little bit, creating a little movement of the hamstrings underneath my thumbs where I'm pressing in. This can feel really good, especially when your client is just used to feeling that simple compression. Throwing some movement into the work that you're doing can access different sensory receptors that can help access a deeper sense of relief. At this point, it's a good idea to sink into the muscles themselves that you have been crowding and softening. So compressing down into the glutes and into the deeper muscles of the hips and starting to slow down the work and offering some stillness and recognition of all this tension that's been holding on and allow it to start to let go and unravel. I wanna keep this awareness of the kinetic chain and a sense of connectedness for my client. So as I'm sinking in with my right hand here, I'm using my left hand to travel up the back a little bit and allow for movement of the hips and the spine to start to feel like they have some synchronicity. At this point, I want to spend some time focusing a little more on the glute medius for my client. He had complained about 
feeling some sharp pains as he really abducted his leg out for a kick that he did in karate. And so I want to spend some time sinking into the glute medius and seeing if I can resolve some of this tension. The glute medius is a little trickier to address, but from this position, I'm using my thumbs to start to sink in and palpate and get information from him about where he's feeling any pain or tension. And once I find these points, I want to really sink in and find some connection between the glute medius itself and the posterior iliac crest, those attachments along there. And then of course, into the TFL, down into the IT band and into the leg itself. The work that I'm doing here is really about taking the ends of muscles and groups of muscles and bringing them closer together to soften and relieve tension that is present. As massage therapists, we often want to lengthen things out and stretch things out, and that's not always the best tactic. I've found that with arthritis and arthritic pain, the tissues are really looking to be softened so that the work we do can be a little bit deeper with that feeling like it's being stretched or pulled taut, which doesn't always feel great with arthritic pain. So finding softness and finding movement for my client's hip was my main intention. At this point, I'm going to start to knead or petrissage, as it were, the glute medius. As I do this, I'm going to pull the glute medius away and use my thumbs to sink into the TFL. These two muscles are right next to each other so I can work both at the same time. And once I find some stillness in the TFL, I'm going to use my thumb to sink in and guide my client to do a little bit of internal and external rotation. As he does this, he's actively contracting and releasing this muscle. So as I sink in, my thumb can feel this muscle contract and relax and I can slide over the fibers of this muscle creating a little friction and then as it relaxes sink in a little bit deeper and get down to the front of the hip which is where he was complaining about some of his issues. The TFL does internal rotation so as I sink in with my left thumb here I'm taking my right hand and pushing the femur into external rotation really accentuating that stretch that my client is doing but I'm giving it that extra little length right at the hip where it really needs it. I've used my huge spatula to flip my client and now he's on his back and I'm taking a second to just use my palms on the ASIS on both sides and rock his hips a little bit, creating an awareness of the spine through the hips down through the legs and I'm going to start into his leg by lifting it up and giving his hip a little bit of traction. If you'll notice, I'm not working on the same hip and this is really just about filming purposes. Um, I did do all of this work on his actual arthritic hip, but for the sake of getting all of this on camera, I had to demonstrate on his right leg as opposed to his left. What I'm doing right now is asking him to bring his knee to his chest, and then when he releases it down, I pull that traction a little bit more, really opening up the front of the hip. This is actually super effective in creating space in the hip flexors, which are often tightly compacted and really hard to release. I want to give his hips some passive range of motion while I have him in this position. So a couple things, I'm going to have him grab the sheet that is wrapped around his leg, which gives him a little control around his feeling safe and draped securely. And the other thing is that when you offer a joint that has arthritis, passive range of motion, that's going to influence the release of synovial fluids. Sometimes movement can feel really painful with arthritis, but movement is almost always the key towards managing pain and being able to do those day-to-day -day activities. The movement I'm doing is a little bit bigger and you might want to start with really small movements with any kind of arthritis in any joint. Um, but once I've got him in this position, I'm using my right hand to allow his hips to move in unison. So as I allow his leg to drop down towards the floor, I'm going to use my hand to pull that left hip up off the table and vice versa. As I pull his leg up a little bit, I'm going to push that right hip down. This gives the spine a little more mobility and allows for movement that maybe hasn't happened for a while. If you'll notice, I've also got his foot hooked into my hip and I'm just holding my left hand underneath his knee. So when I let his leg fall down towards the ground, I'm just allowing gravity to do the work. I'm not doing a lot of pushing and pulling here. The mechanics of these movements are allowing everything to happen naturally and not with a lot of force from my end. Same idea with this technique here, but instead of allowing the leg to drop down to the floor, I'm just lunging forward to push the knee up towards his chest and using my right hand to pull his opposite hip down towards his foot. So just creating movement in every direction. The hips are really complicated and can move in so many different ways, and it's important to remind them that they actually can do so. Don't forget to support the knee as you bring the leg back down onto the table. Work the lower leg and the foot as you wish, and then walk over to the other leg and do it all over again. Good job.